that all they're doing is taking someone else's fruit and pasting it onto their tree. They're duct taping it onto their tree and they have no fruit to show for themselves. I mean, if someone told me, I've been soul winning for 20 years. Well, do you have any converts here? No. Okay, well, where's all the good sermons that you preached? Well, I don't have any. Okay, well, what, you know, where are all the people that you've ministered unto? Where, you know, where are they at? I don't know. Okay, well, where's, your, where's, where's the spirit at? Then you start saying, this guy's not the right tree. A few moments later. I don't think that's the best way to measure if someone's saved by converts. Obviously, that, here's, here's the difficulty with that. If I was going to go around and check to see if you're saved based on converts, what about people that have no converts? How do I know that? And additionally, think about this. Is there ever just necessarily a, a one person is the only person involved in getting someone saved? Is it one person planting and another person's watering and there's all these other steps? So whose convert is it? I mean, is it really Paul's or is it Apollos's or is it, you know, like there's so many factors necessarily in someone getting saved that how does that even work? Or if you think about uh, when it comes to discipleship, you know, that could be another aspect of someone's convert, you know. And again, somebody will say, well, Judas got people saved. No, he didn't. Judas didn't get a single person saved. And, and look, if Judas, look, think about this, okay. If Judas is getting people saved, why didn't he get himself saved? <laughs> no!